Windows is terrible, <laughs> and Adobe is worse. And bring them together made it's like mixing orange juice with toothpaste. I came running back to Mac so quick. And I've been using this as a desktop replacement, and I have hardly missed my Windows computer at all. My Apple's Mac OS X operating system and Mac lineup are better than Microsoft's ubiquitous Windows OS. Five reasons why I think Mac OS is better than Windows. And MacBooks just do it the best. Spoiler alert. It does not. But let's start from the beginning. I started the next year of college and quickly realized that my old 2016 laptop doesn't handle it anymore. The battery dies in an hour and I moved on making more advanced tasks than just reading the notes. Besides from that, this old laptop is quite heavy and new campus doesn't have too many wall plugs. It was obvious that I need a new device capable of handling my workflow. I quickly realized that Windows laptops with long-standing battery are really expensive, and gaming laptops are just too heavy to carry around all day, not to mention a bulky power adapter. And then I convinced myself to check this newest MacBook. I head to the store, watch it closely, looked very solid, fanless, so it doesn't make any noises during the classes, Display looks awesome, it's definitely light and compact, but there's one little problem. It runs macOS. I'm not gonna lie, I was Windows user the whole life, specifically Windows PC power user. And I was scared that not everything gonna work as I expected. But I made the decision and here we are. I like to think about operating system as a language. All of them are similar, but with different accents and nuances. In this video, I would like to focus on this kind of differences between these two most popular operating systems. So let's talk about the basic stuff. I booted up my new MacBook, log on to my Apple ID account, and, here a note, both Windows and Mac OS can be used without any Microsoft or Apple ID account. It's nice that we still have a choice. Computer stores, desktop boot up, and, as always, we have some mess to clean. MacBook instantly downloaded part of my device preferences from my iCloud and saved me some time, but I still spend some time in general option to set it the way I like. Mac OS Dock is really similar to Windows Taskbar, with just a small little change, logo icons located in menu bar. Speaking of menu bar, notable difference here is that Windows always opens the menu bar on the top of every opened window. Mac OS does not, instead sticking the menu bar to the top of the screen and changing content based on what program is actually in use. Staying one moment longer in dock, Windows users are used to show desktop button located in the right corner of taskbar. In Mac OS X, you can adjust similar function in hot corner menu. The difference is that instead of clicking, you hit the chosen corner with the cursor. Another difference are command and option key on keyboard. From my experience I can tell that command work as control and option work as alt key. Easy to remember. Also basic shortcuts are actually identical as well. The more advanced ones requires your memory training, but I recommend to just changing it. Any shortcut can be changed in macOS keyboard preferences. Unfortunately, in Windows you don't have this kind of options. Next step is installing some programs. And that's a really simple process. In Windows, you open Installer and hit Next button several times. In macOS, you double-click your program package, usually a little window appear, and you drag New App to the Application folder. Job done. Worth to mention is that sometimes you have to use alternative programs. For example, Bandit Zip for WinRAR or Pixia for Honeyview. There's a lot of free alternative programs that are also good as same as their Windows competitors. And if you plan switching to M2 device like me, be aware that not every app is working properly with Apple Silicon processors. For example, Discord hangs every time when I start it and only the beta bundle works. Problem starts when you want to install some app. In Windows, we navigate to the control panel, programs, and install a program. We find the software we want to get rid of and click Uninstall. Quick Jide appears and for most of the cases, it's done. Unfortunately, in macOS there is no Uninstall companion. You navigate to the application folder, took an unwanted app and drag it to trash, but it doesn't solve your problem entirely. Programs left behind a lot of additional files. 
and you can see them in normal folder view. So when you want to properly uninstall a program from your macOS computer, you have to type the name of it in search area. Click this little plus button in upper right corner, then check that you are looking for system files also. And then, when you manually delete each of these files, make sure you not delete system file from another app with similar name. Yep, that's the macOS way of doing it. When it comes to fonts, it's easy to install it on both operating systems. You just double click to install a font and it's done. When you want to install a bunch of fonts, in Windows select all your fonts and right click to install. On macOS, navigate to your font folder in fonts app and click install. I really like how macOS let you decide in many cases how your system should work. The most notable for me are system updates. Unlike macOS 10, turning updates off requires switching only one single option in setting menu. Windows 11 learned that lesson and finally turning Windows update is same easy as macOS 10. But I still have nightmares after Windows 10 updates just self turning on, even after disabling it in gpedit msc. MacOS doesn't have any intuitive way of placing windows on screen. You have to click it manually or just tweak this feature with third party app, magnet for example. Other thing that part of people won't love is the inverted scroll behavior. Personally, I find no problem for switching from one way to another, but I know it can be really frustrating, as same as inverted analogs on gamepad. You have to also tweak it with linear mouse up or change it in settings. Another nuance is minimizing program to dock. On Windows clicking on icon maximizes the program and double clicking on icon minimizes it. Single click on icon in macOS dock also maximizes the window. But to minimize it you have to double click not icon but the program bar. I'm not a fan of this way, it's more time consuming and frustrating. The worst part is you can't change that and I can't find any program or trick that helps with it. Now let's get deeper to the technical stuff, shall we? The thing that Windows user will not understand and hate on first time is this little red dot here. In Windows, red X button means closing the program permanently. macOS is not closing the program after clicking the red dot. It closes the active session, but the program still exists in the RAM. To properly close the program, you have to right click the program icon in dock and choose quit. It is macOS thing and exists there from always. It does it because macOS handles RAM slightly differently than Windows. Of course, if you can't stand it, you can tweak it using red quit program. It terminates every program after clicking the red dot. I have to mention the format compatibility difference here. macOS doesn't support NTFS format because NTFS is Windows system file format as same as macOS extended is macOS format. Again, similar languages, different accents. If you want to use your pendrive in both macOS and Windows system, you have to format it to FAT32 or how Apple is calling it, MS-DOS FAT. Expect pendrives, all my other peripherals worked fine with any issues. Both Windows and macOS come with bunch of bloatware to uninstall. In Windows, you just type this command in terminal and it's gone. On macOS, you can't do it. At least I can't. I turned off integrity protection, changed file privileges, spammed a bunch of comments in terminal and still I was unable to uninstall Chess and Apple TV. And as the integrity protection was mentioned, the way to disable it is simply in recovery mode, open the terminal and put this little command there. To disable Windows Defender on the other hand, you have to find this option in settings. Again, same thing, different method. Putting some addresses to host file are identical in Windows and macOS. The path is just only different here. It's probably not a surprise, gaming on macOS is really hard. The lack of compatible games is huge and the lack of compatible Apple Silicon processor games is even bigger. If someone have to, it probably install and start a few games using Rosetta, but the performance would not be the greatest. Let's talk about specific for macOS features for a moment. First of all, the well-known and widely beloved. 
The ecosystem. Apple ecosystem. Sometimes it's hard to break away from that ecosystem. Being honest, mostly ecosystem features is a bunch of specific application features that synchronizing via cloud. For example, mail, notes, voice records, iMessage, etc. The trick is, you have to use Apple applications in the first place to get this cloud benefits. Another thing that Apple didn't mention is that app synchronizing is limited to your iCloud storage capacity. You get 5GB on start, but when you want to expand this limit, you have to pay monthly for a better offer. Another ecosystem feature are well done Bluetooth device switching. But again, mostly limited for Apple devices. When you are using AirPods, they can detect from what source device the audio is coming and switch you in a fly. Or you can use iPad as a second screen. Again, it's handy, but you are stuck with Apple devices. And when you use iPhone, you can take incoming calls from your iPhone on Mac. That's really handy feature and I'm using it a lot. But my favorite ecosystem feature is AirDrop. AirDrop is a service using close-range wireless communication to transfer files. It can transfer files up to 1 GB per second if your device supports this transfer speed, and it's extremely easy to use. For me, AirDrop totally eliminated the necessity of pen drives. It's just so fast and also reserved for Apple devices. Apple claims that you can download iOS applications from App Store and run it on macOS devices. The truth is that this function is not running well when you try download apps from App Store. The most popular phone apps like TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, etc. are not compatible with this feature yet, unless you install IPA package with Sideloadly directly on your Mac computer. Then it runs pretty well. There is also Apple Pay, feature allowing you to make online transactions using digitized version of debit card works pretty smoothly and fast in my opinion. And one small thing, using stock preview app, you can copy text from photos and paste it anywhere else. Little, but really time-saving feature. And that's all my differences between Windows and Mac OS. Whole process to learn new OS and setting device the way I like it took me a one whole day. Is Mac OS or Windows better? You can decide now which one of them you like more, but I leave you with this quote. It's not about what operating system you use, it's all about your mindset. Okay, it's all for today. If you want me to create similar video about Android and iOS, hit the like and subscribe button to cheer me up. Thanks for watching, to the next.